So the Sony a7 IV is one of the most popular cameras out there at the moment. It is being classed as like the perfect hybrid camera. It's great for photos, it's great for videos. It's just that all round really solid camera for hybrid shooters. I'm actually shooting on one right now and I also have a second one here. I really, really love the Sony a7 IV, but that doesn't mean that it's perfect. It does have its flaws. It does have some bugbears and pitfalls. And I'm gonna be talking about five of those cons with the a7 IV today, let's get into it. So although I really, really love the a7 IV, it is honestly my absolute powerhouse. Yeah, like I, like I said, I've got two of these now. I use these for photography, whether it's weddings, event work, live music, portrait sessions. But then again, I also use it for videos. I use it for this channel here. I use it for my client videos. I use it to make Instagram reels. I also use it for weddings and shooting live music, which is a lot of the stuff that I do. It rarely, rarely ever lets me down. I don't think I've ever come away from a shoot thinking, hmm, I'm not feeling this camera, but that's not to say that this camera is perfect. So let's get into floor number one, and that is the rear view screen. The rear view screen on this camera is god awful. It is super low resolution. Oftentimes when I'm shooting in, you know, fairly bright situations, even sometimes in my studio when it's like a, a bright day, it's actually really hard to gauge your exposure. There's so many times where I have to take out the SD card after filming like a sample thing, bring it into my computer and see, am I overexposed? Am I underexposed? It is the worst quality screen. Sony make fantastic TVs, you know, 4K Ultra OLED TV screens, but when it comes to cameras, they just don't implement that technology into the rear view screen. The touch screen itself is, is fairly responsive. It's, it's, it rarely glitches. Sometimes you have to like really sort of use the tip of your finger to get to the menu bit. I rarely use the touch screen for menu. I usually just use the little scroll wheel, but for some people, if they prefer to use touch screen, because you know, everything is touch screen, then that could be an issue. But honestly, the quality of the screen when trying to expose your shot is just God awful. Oftentimes I will have to use like an external monitor to actually see the proper resolution and the proper exposure and brightness of my shot. Floor number two of the Sony a7 IV is the image stabilization. It does not work well at all with intentional movement. What do I mean by intentional movement? I mean, when you're intentionally moving the camera, when you're moving the camera with a purpose, if you're filming, for example, some, some B-roll, whether it be 4K 60, we'll touch on that. Whether it's 4K 60 or even 24 and you just want like a normal frame rate, but just like a slower pan, it doesn't really handle well that intentional movement. It goes a little bit jittery, and often you can see the frame and the sensor just trying to catch up a little bit with that movement. On a gimbal, it's absolutely fine. I pair this with multiple lenses on the DJI RS3 Mini. I'm gonna have a full review of that camera as well, so if you wanna see a full review of the DJI RS3 Mini, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn notification bells on, but, Intentional movement, it really, really struggles. It's it really struggles compared to other like Ibises. Obviously, it's not as worse as the Canons, like the R5 and the R6. It doesn't have that that wobble, that screen warp when you're using a wide-angle lens. Honestly, when I'm using like a 16 to 35 with this, it's actually fine. But it's when you're using something, say like a 24 to 70 or a 70 to 200, it really does struggle. And my 70 to 200 is a G Master. It has optical image stabilization built into the lens, but even still, for video, it does struggle with that intentional movement. Point number two, this camera requires fast cards. If you're using anything less than a V60 card, you are not gonna have a good time. You need at least a V60 card when you're using this camera. If you're doing high burst shots, say for example, you're shooting a soccer game or you're shooting some live music and you need to have those fast bursts to make sure you get, you know, one shot that's good out of 10 or out of six, depends on quality that you set the camera to on the burst rate. But you're gonna need a fast card because it can quickly, quickly fill up that buffer if you don't have a fast card. I use the Lexar 120 gigabyte V60 cards. I do eventually want to get some V90 cards, but those cards are expensive. Now this camera can take the Sony Tough cards, which are the CF Express Type A's, but they are so expensive as well. We're gonna touch a bit more on price after this bit, but if I'm looking here for a Sony 80 gigabyte CF Express Type A tough card, it is 209 pounds here in the UK. Or if you want a 640 gig card, 
that is going to be a thousand pounds. These cards are not cheap. Don't get me wrong, they're fast cards. Type A cards are fast, but they are super expensive. And that is point number four. This camera is not cheap. This camera, if you're thinking about buying it, is definitely not your beginner camera. This is sort of for like your semi-professional. Now, I am a full-time photographer, full-time videographer, and I felt purchasing two of these cameras was definitely necessary for my business. It fits all of the requirements that I need for the types of work that I do, whether it's portrait photography, wedding photography, or podcast production, video production, music videos, live sessions, and all that sort of stuff. This fits well for me, but if you're thinking of buying this for like your first camera, unless you've got money, good luck to you. Price of this camera here in the UK is £2,400, or in dollars, it is $2,498. So this camera is not cheap. Now, don't get me wrong, it's still cheaper than the Canon EOS R6 Mark II. That comes in at $2,700, but even still, this is still very expensive. Yes, you are paying for good quality. You're going to get great quality images. You're going to get great quality 4K footage. You're going to get brilliant 4K 60. And that's point number five. There is a problem with the 4K60. Everyone knows it. It applies a 1.2 times crop on the 4K60. So you lose that full frame capability when shooting in 4K60. Now, a pro to that, you still do get 422 10-bit color science to work with, which is fantastic to color grade with. It is, it's phenomenal. You don't get any loss of quality but you do get a 1.2 times crop. So you go into like basically APS-C mode when shooting in 4K60. Now it's great that you get that in this camera. It would have been nice to maybe still have that 4K60 in full frame, but maybe do it as pixel binned or maybe use only in 8-bit rather than 10-bit. I could still work with that. The 1.2 times crop, it can be a negative for some people depending on what you're shooting. If you're shooting something like landscapes and you do need that full frame width of the sensor, to capture the entire length of the room then this camera probably isn't for you but for me i put myself in the mindset of how can i use the 4k 60 crop to my advantage if i'm shooting for example live music and i can't get any closer to the band than i already am then what i'll do is i'll just whack it into 4k 60 and i can utilize that one point times crop and get that little bit of extra reach now, those are my only real negatives with this camera. Like I said, I love this camera. It is honestly one of the best cameras in this price range for content creators, for photographers and videographers, for those hybrid shooters. If you're wanting a camera just for photography, go to the Sony R-Line or go for the Canon R5. If you're wanting just video, go and get the Sony a7S III. But this is perfect for hybrid shooters but it does have its limitations. Thank you so much for watching this video. Do let me know down in the comments below what you think of this camera. Do you think this camera is for you? Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video right over there.